G'day all, welcome to another video. Uh, okay, so today I wanted to talk about MOV and LIA, Load Effective Address. Good instructions, good instructions. Uh, the first thing I want to say is just a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. Um, your people are legends, really, legends, a lot of yous. Okay, and the other thing is that I made a, a new song with a friend, Neapolitan Dream, so I'll put a little link up at the top there. You can have a listen to that if you want. Some uh, really outrageously out-of-time glockenspiel, and uh, M sings beautifully. Yeah, go and have a listen. All right, but MOV and LEA. So these are two related instructions. Um, kind of related. They're for moving data around. Um, let's talk about them one at a time. So we'll just um, have MOV first. Uh, MOV is probably the most common uh, x86 assembly instruction of all, and all that it does is a copy, really. Yeah, it's a copy. So it copies from the source operand, the second operand, uh, over to the first. Um, they've got to be the same size, and only one of them can be memory. Okay, so let's have a bit of a go. We can use uh, MOV, RAX, and an immediate value, just like that. So you can use a register and an immediate. That's going to copy 89 into RAX. Um, you can go from register to register, so we could have MOV... Um, CX, AX, for example. Yeah, they have to be the same size, so that's not going to work. <laughs> um, yeah, but two registers of the same size is perfectly normal. Uh, the other thing, if we've got something up here in our in our data segment, we could have a byte, just called like um, whatever, really, um, DB, and I'll set it to seven. Why not? Um, we could mov um, into. See, I can't even type this now. I shouldn't have written out such a stupid name. Um, okay, so you can move from a register into memory, and you can also move from memory into a register, just like that. Uh, but you can't use two memory operands. Yeah, so if we had another variable up there, one of them was called WRAL, set to whatever. Um, this instruction just here is illegal, that won't compile. Yeah, memory to memory doesn't work. You've got to have one of them at least is a register. Uh, you can move immediate into memory. So if we had um, our little quarrel instruction back again, um, you can move immediate into a register. So that's fine. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Um, all right, let's just hit run and see what happens. Good program. All right, so 89 is going to be stored in RAX first. There you go, stored 59 just to keep us on our toes. No, that's, um, that's hexadecimal. 89 and 59. Um, all right, so the next instruction should move that 59 in hex over to RCX, which has one at the moment. And there it is, good stuff. And the next instruction is going to move that 59 into this variable just here. So let's add a watch. All right, at the moment he's got seven because that's what we uh, initialized it to. But if we run the instruction, 89. And the final instruction is going to move, well, that 89 back into AL, but AL already has 80. Uh, 89 or 59 in hex, so it's not actually going to change it. Yeah, good stuff. A little bit about the mob instruction. I want to also say that you can use mob as a no op. So no op means no operation. It's used for padding code, and it's just an instruction that does absolutely nothing. <laughs> but um, if you want a multi byte no op, there you go. That's a three byte no op right there. Doesn't change anything, including the flags. The only thing it changes is the instruction pointer. And a 2-byte no-op is um, that one, I think. Maybe AL. Yeah, let's have a look. The first one here, RAX, I'm pretty sure is a 3-byte no-op, and I think that's a 2-byte no-op. But let's have a look at the disassembly. Um, yeah, there you go. So that's the RAX one. One, two, three bytes long in the code segment. And the second one with AL is 2 bytes long. Yeah, so if you ever need to pad stuff with no-ops, you don't have the... I mean, there's more options than just using the one byte no op instruction, which is um, only one byte long, 90H. All right, that's MOV. Uh, load effective address is an interesting instruction, so we'll only cover it briefly today. It's actually uh, an, an arithmetic instruction, and it's got some pretty, pretty interesting little features. Uh, but for today, we'll just look at the basics. So LEA is used to load the effective address of a variable, or something like that. Yeah, effectively to create a pointer. So if we've got our... If we've got our variables up here, I like this one better. Quarrel is better than my bitey variable. So if we want to, if you want to load the address of Quarrel, well, first of all, I should say that, that that is actually a number just there. That's a RAM address that we want to use to reference something. You know, we use it as a variable. But whenever we say Quarrel, 
it's really a number somewhere um, addressing RAM. So if you wanted to move the address that that points to into a register, uh, it's no good using like um, AL uh, MOV because MOV is actually going to move the data that that points to. Um, it's going to move the 56 into AL. If you want the address, then the instruction that you want is LEA. And in 64-bit mode, the memory is flat, so all pointers are 64 bits wide. Um, that right there is going to load whatever number Quiral happens to point to. Why do they even call it that? Let's just call it something decent. My bite. Spelled wrong. I can't win today. Okay. Um, once we've got a pointer in RAX pointing to the same uh, value, we can change it indirectly. So. something like that. Um, MOV into whatever the RAX register is pointing to, um, 7. Yeah, so this is a memory write right just here. Um, so we couldn't have two of those in the MOV instruction, but yeah, it should be fine. So this, this is actually going to change the value of this variable just here uh, indirectly. If I just close this down for a second. And we get rid of this watch here. Um, delete watch, and we'll add a watch to my byte. Okay, so at the moment my byte is 56. If we run the LEA instruction, you get this strange address up here. This address is actually what my byte means. Um, yeah, that's the address that it means to the CPU. Well, not to the CPU, to the compiler, I guess. Yeah. Uh, or the assembler. But if we run the next line, um, what you'll see is that um, my byte changed to 7. Yeah, there you go. So we changed it indirectly because RAX is pointing to it. Yeah, LEA is used to load addresses um, or create pointers, really. Um, you can use SIB addressing with it, though, so it's actually pretty interesting. It is an arithmetic instruction, after all. Um, it doesn't actually read RAM. Uh, but we can have a look at all of that sort of stuff uh, at a later time. And it was just the basics for today, so that's about all that I wanted to say. Uh, we've got our Patreon, we've got our Facebook, and I've got a music channel. Um, go over and have a bit of a look at those. Um, I hope maybe to do some CUDA videos soon. I got two little graphics cards here. Uh, pretty dodgy little graphics cards, GT 710s. But I think you can do something really cool with these. So I'll try and make a video once I get it, once I get it going. Uh, anyway, that's all I wanted to say for today. So thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.